one bit of pain as she had before. And she's now able to raise her hand and wave her hand and dance and able to worship God any way she wants to because all the pain had left her body. I'm not talking about in the days of Paul. I'm talking about in our day. That God still uses the same methods. God still does the same things He's always done. God can still heal your body. If God can still save, He can still heal. If God can still heal, He can deliver. If God can still deliver, God can still do anything. There is nothing impossible for our God. Everything is possible to the Almighty God. Oh, friend. While we have worked in Mexico, we have seen numerous baptized with the Holy Ghost. We have seen many baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. I was able to baptize four young men in January in a horse trough. I learned something about horse trough baptisms. You get baptized right along with them. But as each one of those young men went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, I didn't mind if they splashed water all over me from head to toe because their sins were gone. We sing a chorus after baptism that says, Your sins are buried now. Your sins are buried now. Jesus has thrown them into the greatest sea. Your sins are buried now. Oh, and how wonderful it is that those young men, I believe if I'm not mistaken, that we have seen 12 baptized in the name of Jesus Christ since the beginning of the year. We have seen many receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God still does it. God still saves. It doesn't matter if it's Grand Salina or Reynos of Mexico. God can still do it. God is still in the salvation business. There are still lost souls that need to hear the message of the gospel. And it doesn't matter if they have white faces, black faces, or Hispanic faces, or Asian faces. Every Behind every one of those faces is a lost soul that needs to hear the message of salvation. That need to know about this old time religion that we have. That need to know about this path that holiness that we're called to walk in. They need to know the gospel. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we're so thankful Thank that He has enabled us yes. to be there in Mexico. We just finished our first semester in language school. We finished top of our class. And I've got to brag on Sister Hood. Sister Hood, what was your average at the end of the year? 98. Wow. Mine was 94. <laughs> 94, it's not anything to be ashamed of. Hallelujah. Don't laugh at me. Hallelujah. My wife, it's only because she can spell better than I can. I can't spell in English, let alone in Spanish. So that's, that, that's the reason for that. I'm so proud of my wife. 98 average at the end of the year. We walked into that school knowing burrito, taco, and didn't even say those correctly. It's taco, not taco. Taco. And it's burrito, not burrito. Burrito. At the end of the semester, we had done so well. The other two students that were in the class with us quit. Oh, excuse me. One of the students quit. The other student decided to start all over. And went back to square one. And so it's just going to be my wife and I in a class all to ourselves in this next semester. And our director, who our, the director of the school who will be our grammar teacher, is rubbing his hands saying, I can't wait to get a hold of y'all. So y'all are doing so well, I can't wait to get a hold of y'all. Before we went, Brother Gene E. Bright, who pastors in uh, Mishawaka, Indiana, and is also a, the World Missions Regional Supervisor for South Asia, he was at our church in Paris and he found out about us going to language school and he spoke a word of prophecy to us. He said, you will learn the language so quickly your instructors will not know what to do with you. At the end of January, our conversation teacher, our class schedule is very, very, very rigorous. We spend eight hours a day in class. We start the day with two hours of grammar. Then we go to a lab class. Then we spend two hours in conversation. Now let me explain to you how difficult conversation is. You, we have a sweet little teacher. Her name is Regina. 
little bitty lady, <coughs> native Spanish speaker. She's bilingual, she speaks English. But from the moment we walked in the door of that class, that was the last English word we heard. We didn't understand what she was saying, but from that moment, for the next two hours, she spoke to us and demanded us to speak to her. You want to talk about hard. It's hard to say no to this sweet little grandma sitting there telling you, speak to me in Spanish. You speak to me in English, I'm going to slap you. Don't speak to me in English, speak to me in Spanish. About a month into the classes, we overheard <laughs> Rahina in the hallway talking to the director of the school. She said, those two are coming along so well. I don't know what to do with them. Just as Brother E. Bright had prophesied would happen. Let me tell you, and I'm not saying all this to brag on my wife and I, because let me tell you something. I'm just a dumb backwoods kid. Were it not for the power of God, I wouldn't have enough sense to tie my shoes. That's why I wear loafers. I wouldn't have enough sense to tie my shoes. But when God calls you to do something, He enables you to do it. Yes, sir. Young people, you listen to me very good. There will be times in your life where God will ask you to do something. And you will look up at God and you will say these very words, God, I can't. I want you to testify. God, I can't. I don't talk well. I want you to be a preacher. God, I can't. I don't know, how to, I don't know anything about doing that. I don't know how to do that. God ever calls you to do something, accept it, obey it, because He wouldn't call you to do it if you couldn't do it. Right. It would have been very easy to look up to heaven and say, God, I just can't learn Spanish. It is impossible for me to do it. I just can't do it. But at the same time, God would have looked and said, if I thought you couldn't do it, I would have never told you to do it. I know your limitations. I know what you can and can't do. Now you need to know what I can do. There is nothing impossible for me, says the Lord. I can do all things. And then we as the people of God, we can do all things through Him. Whether it's speaking Spanish, whether it's preaching, whether it's opening your mouth and witnessing to one soul, you can do it through the power of God. Hallelujah. So now we are preparing to go back and we will be returning for one week in July. A uh, group of young people are coming down from the states to the state of Cahuila, where we have uh, a few churches and several missions there. We're going to be coming for our annual camp meeting in Mexico. <clears throat> we'll be going back for a week in July, then returning to the states for camp meeting, and returning immediately to Mexico the first week of August where we will begin our second semester of Spanish language training. I want to say that we are very thankful to God that He has opened our understanding to the Spanish language, that we can confidently stand and speak to a Spanish speaker. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that in five months we have mastered the language. I'm telling you right now, we have learned this is going to be a lifetime learning experience. We're going to spend the rest of our lives learning this language. How many of you know every single word there is in English? Put that hand down. You don't know every word. <laughs> None of you. You know, we're all still learning English. Every day, we, almost every day, I hear a word in English that I've never heard before. Every day, I hear one or two or three or ten or twenty words in Spanish I've never heard before. So for the rest of our lives, we're going to be learning. But let me tell you, God has been faithful. And He has blessed us to be able to understand and to be able to open our mouths and speak and to be able to write, to be able to sing in Spanish, to be able to pray, to be able to testify in Spanish. And we covet your prayers that over this, the rest of this year that God will continue to bless and to use us. We do not care 